Welcome back to This is the Live, the Sunday talk show here on the Arise News Channel. With me today, I have Professor Bola Akintenawa, Professor of International Relations at the Achievers University of Ondo State, and Professor Anthony Killer, Professor of Strategy and Development and Institute Director at the Commonwealth Institute of Advanced and Professional Studies, CIAPS. Now, the presidency says the operational Nava boat with specialized gadgets, referred to as presidential yacht, in the 2023 presidential budget is not for the use of President Tinubu. A statement by the president's special advisor on information and strategy, Bayo Nonuga, explained that it is called a presidential yacht by way of nomenclature because of the high-level security features. He also said the boat was ordered by the Navy under the administration of former President Muhammad Buhari under President Tinubu was only planning to purchase the boat because government is a continuum. This statement came as after the House of Representatives scrapped the controversial 5 billion Naira presidential yacht from the supplementary budget. The House of Representatives removed the item from their budget and transferred the allocation to the student loan component of the budget. Joining me now to discuss the presidential yacht and the controversy surrounding it and other issues is a former director of the Bureau of Public Procurement, BPP, Engineer Emeka Eze. Eze. Good evening, Engineer Emeka Eze, and welcome to This Alive. Thank you, and good evening, viewers. Well, Engineer Eze, let me ask you, um, can a presidential yacht for Nigeria or for the Nigerian Navy, Navy be procured without a budgetary allocation? And now that they say it has been uh, procured and has been delivered, um, can the federal government of Nigeria decline to approve the payment for the supplier? So what will now happen, especially that uh, the uh, supplier is an in, in an international forum? Nigeria said they do, we don't want the yacht. The Navy says it has been delivered. Okay, can we just carry this yacht and give it back to the people that supplied it and say, okay, we already ordered it uh, on that Tinubu, we don't want it. What are the basic elementary procurement principles? You were a former DG of a Bureau for Public Procurement. You even set up the Bureau for Public Procurement as the main man uh, who uh, started that uh, establishment in Nigeria. Thank you, uh, Ruben. Well, as a point of uh, proper information, I wasn't a director, I was the director general. Okay. And the pioneer one for that matter. Mm. The basic principles of procurement is very simple. First is that you start by what are your needs? What problems do you intend to achieve or to solve? And then start from that, depending on who. Incidentally, the president is not a procuring entity. And when that has happened, depending on the complexity of the procurement, you may have a budget in one year, you may have a budget uh, two, three, four years. And if in the course of implementation, you don't have sufficient funds to pay, then you carry it over to the next year. And so really, the issue of uh, presidential yet or otherwise uh, can be discussed here without basically seeing the, the, the planning stage, who and who really initiated it. And if it was a Navy, then it would be improper for anybody to come on, on television to say that it was not properly, because you don't have the information that will help you make an informed opinion. Because I know globally, uh, yes, are, are part of the things, uh, remember the president of Nigeria is the commander in chief of all, all armed forces. The president uses Air Force One in the case of the, of, the, uh, of the Air Force. And so if there is need for a president to have a yacht, it's not for us here to come on television to even discuss uh, such security matters here. It's for, the best thing to do is for us to go back 
and then get the background information before we can make informed opinion. Uh, but engineer is it? I mean, you and I, we used to sit together in council of the federal <laughs> government of Nigeria. And I know that the president used to uh, ask you about something called certificate of no objection. Is it possible that anybody will procure uh, or make the order for a presidential yacht without a certificate of no objection? Is it possible? Yes, that is why I said, yes, it's not possible. That's why I said it will be improper for us to come on television and begin to dis, uh, debate uh, appropriateness otherwise of an activity that has almost ended without having the background. I'm very certain that that level of procurement cannot go on without necessary uh, approvals. More importantly, more so when the Finance Act 2020 has extended the application of public procurement to all three arms of government, the executive, the legislative, and the judiciary, including national security office and all the agencies. So I think uh, uh, it's better for us to tarry a while and get the proper information before we can make further. But suffice it to say that the procurement of that nature is not something you buy off the shelf. I can t tell you for free that you can buy that off the, f there, are more than th there are more processes that are involved. You have to open a letter of credit, you have to pay in stages, you have to go and visit, and then uh, you have to do certification before they're delivered. And when they're delivered, they have no obligation, I mean, no, 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 no alternative than to pay. Well, most recently, President uh, Bola Ahmed Tinubu had uh, a retreat, which I consider belated for ministers, heads of uh, ministries, departments, and agencies. And, well, I, I haven't been there in the past. I know that one of the issues will have been procurement. What will be your advice to President Tinubu with regard to what should be his charge to ministers with regard to procurement? Yes, this is a very important uh, question, uh, Ruben. You do know uh, that um, procurement is at the core of governance. Procurement is the process through which government expend public funds to achieve developmental objectives. And so, for, since the inception of procurement, there have been agitations as to whether procurement is uh, facilitating development or delaying budget implementation. And so, you recall that uh, during the time of um, President Yaradua, when uh, Shegu Adeni, your professional colleague, was the special advisor, let President Yaradua give a clear di directive that nobody does procurement without following due process. And especially, what is a due process? The process is simple. Be clear about what you need. Put Advertise, put it in the public domain so that there will be competition. And once there is competition, you will take advantage of the huge opportunities in the market and give many people op opportunities to participate and therefore drive uh, prices down and achieve value for money. That is the major issue. And so if you ask me, the greatest thing that President Tinubu should do is to give a clear mandate that all procurements must be done by open competitive bidding. Globally, procurements in an agency, if it goes beyond uh, five, ten percent through selective or restricted tender uh, method, the perception in that country is perceived as being wrong. Therefore, if you do advertisement with clearly defined criteria and your needs, you are inviting everybody who considers himself a competent to indicate interest, and then, of course, assuming that the people who have the capacity, I mean, who are, have the responsibility to run the procurement, have the necessary competence and character to ensure that they follow the procedure that has been laid out by law. That is basically what procurement is all about. And so if uh, President Tinibu gives that as a directive, and then supports the bureau, gives, because you need a political support for the, for the regulator to succeed, Otherwise, he may be intimidated by political uh, uh, pressures. But since the president is not a procuring entity, he has nothing to lose 
other than ensuring that the regulator, the Bureau, is supported to deliver on the core mandate of insisting that virtually all procurements should be done through open competitive bidding, except if there are extremely uh, serious concerns where it should be do, done through uh, restricted tendering otherwise. Uh, and once that happens, then I will be happy, and the Nigerian populace will be happy with uh, Mr. President, because you'll be given opportunity to young people who have rather no opportunity to have access to those in authority for them to participate and have their skill tested in the in the in the, in the course of their of, of their doing business. You create more business opportunities for people who are not politically connected but who are competent. And if you do that, then the perception will change. In 2009, when we insisted. Nigeria's uh, corruption perception in this moved from 134 to 34, simply because the government of the day insisted that all procurements must be done by open competitive bidding. However, we also noted that of recent, the value of Naira also has uh, come down, I mean, depreciated against international uh, currencies, meaning that uh, there is need for us to revise the threshold so that uh, we do not have so many little delays and uh, in terms of asking for no objection for little things that can be uh, started and ended at the ministry. So if you ask me, I will recommend that the Bureau uh, revises the threshold that is uh, presently in, uh, in, uh, in operation and then insist that open competition be the procurement uh, method through which you get uh, solicitation from bidders. And when that happens, there's something I want to address, the issue of National Council on Public Procurement and the Federal Executive Council um, involvement in our world of contracts. Unfortunately, there has been ongoing discussion that the uh, National Council on Public Procurement has not been inaugurated and that they should be responsible for their award of contracts. And I think it is appropriate for me to use this opportunity to inform the Nigerian populace that the National Council on Public Procurement is not an awarding authority. It is like any governing board of any agency. And section two of the Act defines their job. Their job is to consider and approve and amend monetary pro, uh, uh, and pre-review thresholds, consider and approve policies and public procurement, approve the appointment of the directors of the bureau, receive and consider and approve the audited accounts of the bureau, and all that. These are the job functions of the, of the council, similar to any other. Approving authority for contract is provided under section 17 of the Public Procurement Act and the list by the State Tenders Board, made up for chief executives and heads of departments as approving authority. And in case of ministry, ministry Tenders Board, made of the permanent secretary, the chair, and the heads of department. However, when we drafted the, the draft bill in, two, in 2004, this constituted uh, Clause A, but unfortunately, Clause B was missing in the past budget. And that B says, for the threshold above the ministerial tenders board, who approves it? The draft bill says Federal Executive Council. Right now, luckily, by Finance Act 2020, that has been corrected and brought in the Federal Executive Council as an approving authority for all contracts above the ministerial Isaac. tenders board. Isaac. And same. Angina Isaac. Yes, sir. This matter that you have brought up, I would, like you, you. I would like you to defend your own legacy. Because the argument, I mean, you as a pioneer DG of the Bureau for Public Procurement, that you helping to draw up the uh, laws and all of that, that you yourself, you did not want a council on procurement so that you will have uh, enormous powers. Now in retirement, your critics are saying you want, you want a council. What you yourself did not allow when you were there, uh, you now want to allow it. So can you talk to us about your legacy and what you think of the Bureau for Public Procurement as it is now with regard to corruption and the selective t tendering that you refer to that the Senate is, uh, is uh, pointing to? Your critics are blaming you. They say, no, 
what uh, engineers they didn't want. That is the number one advocate for it. That's how they went and bought, uh, and well, bought, uh, and bought presidential yacht without uh, following. Uh, uh, well, I, I don't have information in that regard. Yeah. Unfor unfortunately, I never said I want the council inaugurated. Okay. I said what the council has said it has to do. Up to today, I still am opposed to the council being inaugurated as it is now because what that. What the council does, what it does is that is an appointee of government of the president will be given president directive. Our argument is that the National Council on Privatization, which is the disposal arm of government, is headed by the vice president. And then the National Council on Public Procurement is an acquisition council, which is the council set up to design policies for the expenditure of public procurement. And in Nigeria, only one person is vested with the authority to govern the country under Section 5 of the Constitution, that the executive powers of the president of the federation invested, shall be vested in the president. And so if the president that is so elected by Nigerians do not know, have input into how policies on how to expend money is done, at the end of the day, you will see things that happen like in PID happening everywhere in all sectors of the economy. People will stay in one place or the other and sign up the country. And so it was on that basis that uh, the council was not inaugurated. And we sent in a bill to the National Assembly to bring back Mr. President as the chair of the council so that we, it doesn't conflict with Section 5 of the Constitution that vests the power of the Federation in him to how to spend money. Because what well, government is about spending for public funds for public goods. And if the man who has the responsibility to account to Nigerians on how this money should be spent is not in the know of policies that affect it, then there's something wrong with the law. So it is not correct to say I'm asking for the inauguration of the council. I never said so. What I'm saying is that the council should be inaugurated after amendments to make the president the chair of the council. And because uh, if you see, I was invited by EFCC to express an opinion on PNID issue. And part of the issue was that the executive uh, arm of government, headed by Mr. President, was not aware of that commitment. And if you read the judgment, these are part of the reasons advanced by our legal experts to uh, get Nigeria after the quagmire. You can imagine this kind of commitment happening in every sector of the economy. Before you know, Nigeria will be signed off totally. And so it is wrong for anybody to insinuate that I'm asking for the inauguration of the council. No, I'm not in support. Even as I've seen to you, I am not in support of the council being inaugurated as it is today. If I, I don't want to tell you the, 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 the story behind why it was not inaugurated, because on September 17th, 2007, we had set up a meeting to inaugurate the council. But something happened. Something happened in a, I don't want to say here because uh, the people involved are still alive. I don't want to embarrass anybody. But suffice it to say, that without the support of the president, the bureau will not be as effective as I was. I was effective because I had direct support and protection of the president to ensure that things are done right. And that's all I'm asking for. I'm asking president to support the bureau and hold the bureau accountable for any action that, or inaction, any lapses in the system. The bureau as a regulator should be held accountable for any lapse because that's what they're there. Engineer. Because the bureau reports to the president through the office of the chief of staff. Engineer Eze, you left uh, yes. the bureau for public procurement yes. in 2016. Will you say that your legacy has been sustained? Looking back. Well, the law has not changed. The principles are the same. Perhaps the operators are different. And like I said, the political authority needed by the bureau to perhaps be very efficient, M maybe it was lacking. So if you have people who do not understand the spirit of procurement, perhaps they will see procurement as delaying budget implementation. That had been an ongoing conversation since the beginning of procurement regime in the country. But it is for people to understand that procurement gives Nigerians equal opportunity it is giving Nigeria, gives value for money. It uh, provides fairness of access so that people can, but you should understand also that 
When people are in positions of authority, pressures are brought to bear on them by supporters of one kind or the other, classmates, schoolmates, church members, mosque members, uh, old boys association, parish priest members, parish par parishioners, your, your communities, wanting you to use your position to do favors for them. And that favors will mean that you have to circumvent the process. And if you begin to do that, then those who don't have access to them will be left out and there will be anger in the land. And so the principle of procurement is that actually the people who are there must be able to say no under pressure and then and advertise, set that the criteria. But then of recent, there has been a lot of transaction rather than um, using procurement for development. If you do procurement for transaction purposes, then the spirit is defeated. But the principle, the law has remained the same. Perhaps the political actors are different. Okay, I was in one class recently. Uh, maybe I even, you know, had to comment on it. Uh, talking about uh, e, the e-technology range of international trade as an emerging space in the international law uh, of trade. Okay, do we have a framework for that in Nigeria? Can we, in Nigeria, can we engage in uh, electronic uh, trade within the international sphere? That's the major focus of that uh, uh, discussion that I was involved in, that forum that I was involved in. Do we have it, or is something Be we have to worry I about? Left, yes, but, no, before I left office, we have initiated the EU government, EU procurement uh, regime. And we did sensitization, selected pilot ministries, and then we were working with the UNODC, United Nations Office of Drugs and Crime, and set up a, a, a data system in the bureau, did all that, and then before I left, I requested for a political authority for that to be deployed. Unfortunately, that political authority didn't come out before I left office. I didn't know whether it came out. But recently, as late as last year, I'm very aware that the Federal Executive Council approved the introduction of e-procurement in our system. And uh, I'm also aware, because I, I participated in the BPP stakeholders' engagement towards that uh, deployment. What is now left is for the BPP to go step by step Choose pilot ministries where, especially for high net uh, expenditure ministry like works, power, water resources, energy, and all that, to deploy the e, e procurement uh, regime that they, they have developed. Federal Executive Council at the policy level has already approved it. It's a question of uh, uh, implementation. Well, just one more thing. You said you were not enthusiastic about the inauguration of the uh, council. But are there other deficiencies that you have observed in the Procurement Act? The major deficiency we have seen of recent is trying to amend the Procurement Act through Finance Acts. Recently, we have had the sections of the Procurement Act amended through Finance Act 2020 and 2023. And that tends to cause confusion within the procurement community. If uh, somebody goes to BPP website with a view to downloading the Procurement Act in the country, suddenly he may not know that some sections have been amended by the Finance Act. And so what we are recommending is that all the amendments that have been proposed in the Finance Act be consolidated into one single amendment. So you don't amend the principal act through subsidiary Finance Act every year because it throws the procurement community into confusion. Every year you change a section, every year you change a section. By the time they get to understand what is applicable, you have changed another section. And we believe that that is not uh, proper. So we are recommending that all the um, intended amendments be consolidated under one, uh, under one regime. And uh, recently, the, the Finance Act 2023 criminalized administrative function of procurement plan. That will even further um, cause confusion in this system, as well as uh, misalignment of projects where MDAs get projects, uh, uh, will I say inserted with, uh, don't mind my use of my words, for lack of any better word to use, 
When, for instance, in the, in the Ministry of Labor, for instance, you give them the responsibility of constructing a road, there's no way they will they will they won't know what to do because they're not set up in, uh, they're not set up principally to do roads. So, and then you come to Ministry of Works that has the responsibility to do road. You have most of their projects give having some some projects having one million naira, two million naira, ten million naira, and that's a very big confusion in the system. And so. I believe that there is need for the leadership, both the executive and the legislature, to come together and agree on how to allocate the resources so that we don't filter away the little we have in spreading our projects thinly and getting none completed. So that is what I think is also wrong with the system. So I, Again, I, the character and competencies, uh, character and competencies and the capacities of uh, officers responsible for procurement need also to be, uh, there has to be a continuous capacity building and engagement so that the people who have the responsibility to manage procurement at any point in time know what is expected of them at any point in time. Well, 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 well. Minister David Mai, for example, says he will build their roads just relying on concrete. Are you, do you have him in mind? Is he saying that... Uh, is he saying something wrong? Well, uh, well, well. I, I think uh, let me first of all congratulate uh, Engineer Mahi for well-deserved appointment. It's the first time a civil engineer, second time a civil engineer has been appointed into that position, and uh, I can imagine that he is for, he's crying out due to the frustration that he met on ground. Every other person who is in his position will be angry as much as he is. So. I believe that uh, in his comments, he, he knows, as much as all of, do, all of us do know, that um, the use of material is not necessarily the fault of the material. Because even in the Ministry of Works, I'm aware that they have uh, a manual for the use of concrete and that's at the same time. So it depends on which um, material you have chosen and the material uh, soil texture. Nigeria doesn't have the same standard soil profile all across the country. So the material you're going to use in the area will depend on the soil conditions, the geotechnical condition, the traffic volume, and all things. And there's not, naturally, those ones are not given to, um, uh, will I say, these are technical issues that we don't subject to public debate. These are technical issues that are subjected to technical debate. Then the issue of uh, professionals in the sector, I believe uh, the minister is a professional person. I had in one forum saying that henceforth, only registered engineers must supervise um, projects because there's a lot about quality control and the equipment. And I had him say that as much. So he knows, and as much as I do know, that the quality of what you get at the output depends on the quality of the input and the supervision and the construction methodology. And I'm sure that that is what he's alluding to. His cry was as a height of frustration of this state of our Nigerian roads, which is an embarrassment to every one of us. It's not the problem of asphalt or concrete. Okay, the engineer is a uh, engineer, quality supervision. Engineer is a, we have to go now. Let's go back to where we started from. This presidential yacht that everybody is talking about, and we've been told by the Navy that this yacht has been bought and has been delivered since June. So. Is it possible for, for them to just carry this their yacht and take it back? Or are we confronted with a, a fair accompli? I mean, well, yeah, they said it was the Buhari government that bought it. Uh, is the Tinubu government that will pay for it. Okay, it's not Tinubu that bought the yacht. Can't they just take their yacht back? Since we all have said we don't want it. Remember that the yacht is not like going to go and buy a bag of cement. It is not President Buhari that bought the yak, nor is President Tinubu that is paying for it. It is Nigeria that is paying for it. <laughs> contracts once signed are governed by the conditions of contracts. And part of any government country is the sanctity of contracts. You must respect the contract you have signed. If a yacht has been delivered, it meant that uh, be, be, before now, there had been a commitment correspondence between Nigeria and whoever de um, manufactured it. Yorch is not something you go and pick on the streets. 
It must have been an order. And so that's why I said in the beginning, it is important for us to have the details before we can make any informed opinion. But if it has been delivered, it meant that the process didn't start today. It, didn't, it may have taken more than two or three years in the past before that can come. And if you go further, I don't think that even that amount of money in terms of a dollar will be the, the, the overall cost of it. So I won't speculate, but all I know is that if it has been delivered, certifies, Nigeria has no choice than to pay for 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 a project that has been delivered. <laughs> well, on that note, Engineer Mika is a former Director General Bureau for Public Procurement. I'd like to thank you very much for joining us on this live, the Sunday talk show. <laughs>